Well, meantime, our next guest is Friday's positive market performance following a much weaker than expected jobs report was, he says, predictable. In fact, he says that going back to 1998, when headline non-farm payrolls missed expectations by 100,000 or more in a rising rate environment, the S&P 500 has rallied a median of about 1 percent. So joining us right now is Paul Hickey, who's the co-founder of Bespoke Investment Group, and you remain bullish. Paul, explain yourself, because I think there's a lot of people who think that the market at some point is going to have some kind of retreat. Um, you, you, you suggest that the history says something else. Yeah, so I mean, when you look at Andrew, uh, the market is most preoccupied with the Fed and when the Fed is going to start removing uh, accommodation and tapering and ultimately raise rates. That's the biggest concern. And the Fed says one thing, the market thinks the Fed's going to go earlier. Uh, what better than the weakest jobs report relative to expectations ever to calm the nerves of investors? So uh, I think that was a, a big sigh of relief for the market. And, We've been in this gravity-defying market for the last year. We've been over the 50-day moving average for the S&P 500 over 90 percent of the time uh, in the last year. The S&P has been oversold on only 2 percent of trading days over the last year. That's one standard deviation below its 50-day moving average. There's only been eight other times throughout history where you've seen that happen. And while the ultimate or the initial reaction to that kind of uh, situation would be, OK, well, we're 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 due for a reversion to the mean and some sort of reality check from this exuberance. Looking at those prior periods, looking forward, one year later, the S&P was, was better than average returns on a median basis and higher every time in those eight periods. And the main driver or one of the main drivers of stocks over the last year has been all of this liquidity in the market. And based on the pace of job creation that we've seen over the last, whether you want to look at the last three months or the last six months, or even the last nine months, it's going to take, you know, well over a year to get anywhere close to uh, these pre-pandemic uh, employment but levels. Paul, <laughs> let me, Paul, Paul, let me see. Paul we, we've, only, we've only got about 60 seconds, but, you know, depending on who you believe, there's a view that the print next month uh, or the month after on jobs, you know, could, could be very well uh, big and that this was some kind of aberration, in which case, the Fed may actually have to move and think in a different way. You had Charles Evans effectively just say that, I think, on our air. Right. And, well, yeah, that could happen next month. And last Friday, there was a lot of expectations that it was going to be a million, too. So you, I think the Fed is, is willing to say we have to see these numbers be, uh, and see this substantial progress, not just anticipate the substantial progress before they're going to act. And I think that's going to keep this uh, very loose liquid, liquidity environment intact for the time being. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.